Welcome back to Matter Effects Podcast. I uh, haven't been really the most consistent with the YouTube videos. I have to apologize for that. I have been trying to keep up with the comments I get here and there from everybody and answering questions, but sometimes life and adulting gets in the way. I have been putting off the review on uh, the handgun we're going to talk about today, this Ruger GP100, until I had enough time behind it to uh, really get a feel for it. I don't like doing reviews on brand new guns. I actually have one I'm very excited to do, but I want to wait till I get a few hundred more rounds through it before I uh, put it in front of the camera and then pass my opinion off like it actually means something. At this point, I have not put near the rounds through this revolver that I have a lot of my firearms, but honestly, a lot of it's because it's a revolver. I mean, you get six shots at a time. It, believe it or not, really slows down how fast you go through ammunition. At least it does for me. But I feel like I've gotten a good enough feel for the firearm, and I've grown to really appreciate its strong points, and I wanted to talk about this today. But uh, I do re just really want to quickly uh, thank everybody for the encouragement, for the comments, even for the criticism. Because if you tell me something's horrible, I need that so I can continue to try to improve this and make it more pleasurable for y'all to watch and just help me produce a better show. But let's take it up to the tabletop, and I'll start talking about this. Um, I'm going to see if I can do this without turning the fan on because it's a wonderfully hot and humid June day today and I'm trying to do this without the background noise of the fan running. We'll see how that works out. Alright, now, in the past I have been admittedly critical of uh, the way Smith & Wesson presents you with a brand new firearm. They give it to you in a blue cardboard box and I think that's a little bit ish. But uh, Ruger takes some time to give you a really nice thermoformed plastic case. You get all your... Uh, typical gun documentation up in the top which I don't usually read I'm just that's just the way I am about it these we'll talk about in a second these if you've watched my uh, my speed loader comparison you'll know what these are already and this is what you get in the box you get your revolver and this is pretty much as delivered with one change and you get this cute little disassembly pin that if you read the directions and if you do uh, look online you'll see instructions on how to strip this firearm down to basically a bare frame and involves using that pin which Ruger gives you which I think is nice but this is the gun as delivered the only change I've made to it and I'll get this out of the way early is I put a fiber optic front sight post on it which this is the first time I've messed with a fiber optic front sight I will put these on every one of my guns from now on that is so much nicer to see than a plain black ramp like you get from the factory. It really, really helps your front, your eye pick up that front side post. But, uh, you know, a lot of people would say there's not a lot to talk about when it comes to revolver. I mean, it's a big, heavy slab of steel. I think this one is 40 ounces in the four inch barrel length. Um, it's a six shot, which you would expect being a revolver. This one's chambered 357 Magnum, which I happen to have some dummy rounds for comparison purposes. This is a dummy round for a 38 Special. That's kind of the darling of the, uh, the self-defense world. This is a dummy round for a 357 Magnum, and you can pretty quickly tell there's a little difference in the two, despite the fact that they're otherwise very similar dimensions. 357 Magnum, the case is a little bit longer, the overall length is a little bit longer, but this operates at substantially higher pressures and drives bullets much, much faster than 38 Special does. For a point of comparison, I hand load mode ammo, my 3.7 Magnum rounds shoot the same 125 grain flat point bullet as my 38 Special hand loads. And while my 38 Specials are doing about 800, 850 feet per second, the 3.7 Magnums are doing closer to 1,350 to 1,400 feet per second. So this, being a 3.7 Magnum, presents a hell of a lot more muzzle energy than the 38 Special will. And with extra muzzle energy, there's no free lunch, you get lots of extra recoil, except for two things that I think make this definitely my preference over Smith & Wesson's, which I know a lot of people are more fond of. First of all, when Ruger redesigned and kind of rebuilt the uh, their older Security 6 line into the GP100, one of the stated intentions was they wanted to make a gun that, unlike some of the lighter frame 3.7 Magnums on the market, could survive a steady diet of 3.7 Magnum all day, day in, day out, no matter what. This gun was not built to shoot 357 Magnum occasionally, once in a while, just for self-defense. This gun was intentionally made strong enough and heavy enough to deal with that round and that amount of pressure every single time the hammer comes down. And there's been anecdotal evidence, and I've talked to people, though I don't own any, 
who have had like Smith and Wesson of uh, the 600 series that are comparable to this that have had issues with them shooting really high pressure 37 Magnum over a long period of time. I'm talking about thousands of rounds over years. So I wanted to get something that was going to be built like a tank. I can deal without the frills and some of the extra niceties that Smith & Wesson does prevent because I think that they have a little bit better fit and finish out of the gate, but I wanted a gun that was going to be reliable and going to be tough, and I'm willing to sacrifice a lot of things for a gun that is reliable and strong. And if anybody wants to do a comparison of this dimension right here, your top strap, compared to a 38 Special or even some of the other 37 Magnums on market, this is a very, very beefy gun. Uh, there's been a lot said about the way this firearm is actually manufactured and built over the years. Uh, some of which I'll go over here, and I'm sure I'm going to miss some parts. Forgive the gun from frosting over. It's humid as hell down here in uh, Louisiana right now. But one of the things I found interesting was, if you notice the locking knot, the uh, notches where the uh, this bottom pole locks up to hold the cylinder steady, it's actually not perfectly in line with the cylinder, which is what you see in a lot of other firearms. In other words, the notch is off-center to make sure that this dimension right here, the thinnest part of the cylinder wall, is not where that notch is. This was an effort by Ruger to give the to make the cylinder stronger and give it more meat. Uh, overkill, maybe, maybe it makes the gun stronger. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a mechanical engineer, but I can see a lot of attention to detail given to this gun to make it a little bit stronger than maybe it needs to be. Uh, these guns are often talked about having a triple lock system, meaning that. This detent on the back helps to locate the cylinder in the frame. This pawl on the bottom helps to locate the cylinder in the frame and keep it timed correctly. And there's also a third latch here in the front of the crane that locks solidly into the, into the uh, frame of the firearm. Meaning that when this gun's locked up, there is virtually no movement in that cylinder. Just the littlest tiny bit of wiggle back and forth. But the gun overall gives you this wonderful inclination that this is a very strong, reliable, well-built firearm. And this extra meat and this extra beef comes with a weight penalty, of course, but when you're shooting a 3.7 Magnum, that extra weight's not that much of a hindrance. And I'll explain why. I mean, think about it like this. For any of you that are into cars, you get a 4,000-pound Cadillac, put 300 horsepower in it, and it, it goes, but it doesn't go super fast. Take that same 300 horsepower, put it in a 2,000 pound car, and it runs like hell. The heavier the weight of the firearm, the more the firearm's own mass reduces or resists the tendency for it to move. I mean, we're talking about physics 101, but a heavier firearm gives less perceived recoil given the same muzzle energy. So the gun being a little bit heavier honestly helps it tolerate recoil better. On top of the fact that, unlike Smith & Wesson, where Smith & Wesson, the uh, the frame of the firearm is often exposed on the back strap. They have a full frame versus Ruger that has what's called a tang frame, meaning there's a single spine of steel that protrudes right down here through the grip where the, uh, where the, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Where the rebound spring hang is contained. And that hammer spring is the only reason why there needs to be any spur down here. Now that means instead of having a full frame and just a little thin layer of rubber right here, you get a lot more rubber to help soak up the recoil. When I shoot my wife's, my wife's Smith & Wesson, I've got an exposed strap of steel right here beating you in the palm the whole time you're shooting it, whereas with this, I get this admittedly hard rubber, but it's still rubber, it still gives. I've been out to the range and shot 100 rounds 307 Magnum out of this thing in a sitting, and my hand wasn't sore. I mean, I felt the back blast and I was, you know, my ears were ringing a little bit, but the gun wasn't beating me up. It honestly kind of rewards the shooter for, for taking the time, the trouble to pick it. And as far as accuracy, I mean, shooting this thing, this thing single action, I was making perfectly respectable groups right out of the gate. The gun really does sing its own virtues. But it's one thing I want to point out is that yes, there's some extra weight here, but I don't think that way it's a hindrance. And having the four inch barrel length, the gun is so perfectly balanced. I mean, that's my one criticism of revolvers is that the balance point on them tends to be very different from a semi-auto because with a semi-automatic, you have more of the mass towards the grip because you have a slide back here. Whereas with a revolver, you know, a four inch barrel, that barrel can't start until the cylinder ends. And the cylinder is almost always gonna be in front of your hand. So they tend to be more barrel heavy. But a four inch barrel really does balance fairly well in the hand. Uh, the three inches might balance a little more towards the butt. Some people might prefer that, but you give it velocity. 
and the six inches tend to be more barrel heavy and I don't like that. The other issue with a six inch barrel is, as you can see from this holster, I have a holster for every pistol I own because I plan to carry these firearms. The longer that barrel, the longer it takes for you to pull this thing about the holster and clear the holster to put it into use. And I really think a four inch barrel for a revolver that you're gonna carry and use kind of gives you that perfect balance between the velocity you get from a larger barrel, the best balance point, it gives you the, the best ease of use. This is the Goldilocks gun for me. And I mean that really is the best recommendation I can give. If you're looking for a 37 Magnum revolver, if you're looking for something that you want to shoot, I'm not talking about wall hanger, I'm not talking about pretty, although in the stainless model you could certainly spend some time polishing and shining this gun up to make it look pretty if you wanted, but in the, the standard matte stainless I think it's perfectly acceptable. But the thing is, if you're looking for something that's going to be that bear repellent firearm, if you're looking for something that you're going to carry out in the woods, maybe you want to put some CCI uh, shot shells in it so you have a little bit of rat shot on board, if you're looking for a good hiking, camping, backpacking gun, a good woods gun, this is my pick. That's what this gun is for. This is for when I go out on a hike and I think I might have to deal with a four-legged predator, I'd rather have 3.7 Magnum in my firearm than 9mm. This is going to be more muzzle energy. This is going to be more velocity. This is going to be more power than I can get with most of your semi-automatic handguns out there. And in that environment, six shots through seven Magnum is plenty. But I'll leave some links to um, a speed loader comparison. I've still got these two I keep in the box. This HKS speed loader will probably not get used because I've honestly taken more to the uh, Comp J2s. But please check out that Spieler comparison if you want to have a look at my thoughts on those. This holster is a uh, Bianchi. I uh, can't really recommend it too, too heavily just because I haven't spent a lot of time carrying with this holster. I can say it's well constructed and maybe in the future I'll get a chance to do a little, spend a little bit more time talking about that or it might be a blog article. And speaking of the blog, if you haven't checked out the blog, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the blog article that I, I wrote on this in addition to the YouTube video, you really should check out the blog, guys. There's a lot of good articles there for me and my co-host. But I'll wrap this up, keep it short. I am sweating myself to death in this garage. Nobody wants to see what's on the other side of this camera right now. It's not very pretty. But leave me a comment, leave me your thoughts, and uh, check out the blog. I appreciate all the support and all the comments y'all have given me so far, and I look forward to talking to y'all next time.